everyone, he's Andreano Lanusi, and I'm here today to show you some of the 3D features that we have in FireMonkey. Also, how you can use some of the very basic techniques and controls that we have in FireMonkey to improve the user experience and look and feel of your application. Let's start looking this application in action, okay, before we go through, through the code. I can run this application on 32-bit Windows, 64-bit Windows, or Mac OS X. I'm going to show first in 32-bit bit Windows, and then we're going to see them on, on Mac. Um, this application is a FireMonkey 3D text editor, and initially you can just drag here on the screen, use your mouse, mouse wheel, to change how deep you want the object. You can rotate the object on the screen. Uh, and we add some dynamic to this application. So you can change the text, you can do whatever you want. So you see here that it's this kind of um, corners. I can customize it and I wanna, I can show where I wanna the corners. In this case, I wanna on this both sides, one on the, on the top, the one in the bottom. I can customize how depth I wanted the frame, how depth I wanted the text, and also I can start, for example, change the color of each part of my object. So you can see I can change here on the back as well. There is a component, the T color component, which color paint component, which gives you this feature to select the color you want. So instead just to use color, you can define what kind of texture you want in this object. Let's say I want to use this image here, and now so I can use, I can change the color. Since I'm using here cameras and light on this 3D object, you have these nice effects here. So I can add a, a texture on the left side. Let's say I want to use this one. So you see that's a little dark here. Let's change a little bit the color. And also you can change, you can define a texture on the back. So in this case, I'm going to just define on the left and the front. I can customize the text, the color of the text. I can add, customize the inside part inside, which I call left here on the, on this program. And you can change the texture as well. So you can define a texture to to this text here, to the 3D text. Okay, you can come here and decide to remove the text, you just add it. And if you wanna, just to give a better idea of this 3D object, I added this option here that you can change the color of the background. But at the moment you wanna export the image, you're gonna just going to export this part here. The background is not going with your uh, final uh, in your final image, okay? So instead only to use the You see the the mouse here to change how depth and they rotate the object You can use these nice controls that which is a track bar here and also you can Use this small circle with the arrows which it's very similar what you have in Google Maps But we add this nice effect glow effects here on the objects to give you a much better look and feel Okay, so this is one of some of the things you can use. So when I'm rotating the object here, I'm not rotating the object, I'm rotating the cameras I have around this object. This is one of the things I'm going to show you on the code. So uh, I can just go here and export the object as a PNG file. And after you export this object as PNG, you just can open and see how nicely it is, this object here on the screen, okay? So anything you change, you can just go back and, and export again. You see these nice cracks here uh, on the object, and this is happening because I'm running this application on a VM, and the VM doesn't have support to anti-aliasing, okay? So in case you want to see this image perfect here, you have to run in a physical machine, and I'm going to run the Mac on a physical machine, which is my host here, and you're going to see the image perfect. So let's double click. So that's the object. So you don't have this 
this anti-aliasing problem with the 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 final image, okay? Because that that uh, FireMonkey handle for you because you're using this case here GDI Plus or Direct 2D to handle on Windows. So that's uh, the my application run on Windows. Pretty nice, right? Now let's take a look and see this application running on Mac. Let's take a look and run this application on Mac now. So I change my target platform in the IDE to OS X and just read huh? run. And the IDE is going to deploy the application on my Mac. So I already started, uh, I have the application here running on Mac. Okay, so that's what you see. I'm going to change this application to this desktop where I have the platform assisting, assistant running. And here is my application, okay? So you see this application nicely. I'm rotating here the object. I'm going to uh, do the same I did before so I can change it for Delphi. I can 3D text here. You see, I can, uh, for example, change what kind of corner I want to. Okay, I can change the level of radios here. I can change how deep depth I want to detect. I can define a texture to my object here. Let's change the color. Uh, let's add a left texture, which you have here. Okay. If you want to decide a back one, a back texture, you can just select this picture here. I have a nice picture. Of this BMW W car, and we can change how deep you wanna. You can use the same controls. You can rotate your object, and also uh, one of the nice things I did here to show you that you can have a 360 view of this object. I added this animated button here. You click in the animate. And you see the animation go going on your object to show the object in 360 degrees. So it's pretty nice. Okay, so I can change and doing the same thing here. Uh, I can change as well the the color for the 3D text, and I can export this object as user Andreano. And I'm going to use a desktop. And it's exported on my, my desktop here. We got the message. Let's go on my desktop and open this image. I have the image here. So that's the same image exported to a PNG file. So you see the transparent background in the image, the lights, everything applying to your application, but this time you're running on Mac. So the same application, uh, one application on Windows, another one running on Mac. So you see things working the same here. Let's go back in the IDE and take a look how I created this application and learn some of the concepts on 3D. In FireMonkey, you can create HD application or 3D application. On the HD application, you can use the viewport component to handle 3D objects. In my case, since the primary goal for this application is to show a 3D text editor, I create this application using the 3D uh, FireMonkey application template here when you create a project. When you do that, all of your forms is going to be 3D. So instead to the send of T form, you're going to descend from T form 3D, and it means all this application is going to be a very intensive use, is going to do a very intensive use of GPU. So, and that's the major reason I created this application as a, three, as a 3D application. Uh, in order to organize my components, I use a layer component first. Here I have the layer 3D on the left side, and in order to hold to the object, I use a layout, T layout, and inside the T layout, I have a bunch of components. I have a track bar, I have a rectangle with, with some checkbox. Here, very interesting, this is a list box where I have 
four items. When you see here on my corner list, which is the three list box, I have four list box, uh, list box items, and inside each list box, I have a layout. I use the layout to organize the rectangle on the middle. Why am I using that? Because instead to draw or to uh, import some image in my application, I just use the layout and I embedded a rectangle inside layout to show the exactly same time of type of corner here. When I do that, let me just show you the rectangle component have contain have four types of corner. So bevel, inner line, inner round, and round. In this case here, in this item, it's round. And to show you that this is a full rectangle, I just came here on my layout and I changed the proper clip child to false and you see the full rectangle here. Since I don't want to show the full rectangle, I just want to show the corner here. Uh, the position I have of these components is like just the left uh, top corner of the rectangle and I enable uh, change to through the clip children. So that's the same principle I'm using in all of the I list box items here. Also, I'm using some of the other components here, which is the T expander. And this is a pretty nice component because you can add a bunch of components here inside. And in design time, you can expand or not. This is very similar to the VCL T category panel. Okay, here these three components are list box. You see, I just defined three columns for this component. You see that the T list box is very powerful in FireMonkey. I have a color panel which gives me the color the user are is selecting here. I can just write the event on change and pick the color I want. At this point here, I'm change the color of the frame, and this color of the frame is pretty nice because I just change here, just change the Proper one of the properties I want in the rectangle, and the dot color here is the property I have to pick on the color panel to know what color the user selected. And beyond that, you see on the right side here I have another layout which I'm using, it which is inside the layer 3D, and I align this layout to the right, and inside the T layout. You see that I have here more three, uh, three, two components, the track bar and the circle, okay? The circle, when you look here in the structure panel, the circle has a glow effect, which I can disable as well. There's another effect here. I'm using two effects, okay? And these two effects together give me, when I change, when I disable the effects, you see what's happening. This effect is just applying here in, into the layout navigator. When I apply this new one, it's going around my circle. You see that I have a circle component. Inside the circle component, I have a layout to organize all of my components inside this circle. And inside each circle, I have a button, a speed button. You see here, I have a speed button. And instead to draw I image and import the image inside, input the image inside the speed button. What I did here, I use path data to represent my arrow. So I, when I was building this application, I saw I want to represent the Google Maps and how I'm going to take the Google Maps arrows and put inside my application. What I did, I used this tool here, which is called Inkscape, and here you see just let me show you here the Google Maps Navigator. What I did here was pretty much draw on, on top of the original Google Maps arrows my arrow. And when I did that, I just come here and export this coordinate as a XML. And just take the attribute D and I copy this attribute here. Let me just show you, I remove this one, paste, and then I have my arrow here represented. So the same thing I did, I just rotate, in this case, the arrows to the other position, to the left, to the right, to, in down. 
and the color I'm defining here is going to be the color going to be used on my application, on my, on my arrow. So since I define it and I add this arrow inside the speed button, when I click here on the arrow, um, the, the arrow, the path component has an on-click event, but where I'm going to click is, in the is on the bottom. It's not on the arrow. So to make that the click on the arrow reflect on the button, what I did was just change the property, hit that to false. And when somebody click on the arrow, they are going to be clicking on the, on the button. So uh, when they run the application, let me run the application again here on, on Windows. Let's run it as a 64 bits, just to show you that you can run as well as 64. I'm going to compile the application. I have this nice effect, which is part of my it's part of my style, and when I click here and I keep the bu the but mouse button down, uh, he's repeating the event, and this is repeating the event because I just enable the repeat click prophet here on my speed button. That's some of the things you can do, and some of the things you can create with the FireMonkey editor. Let's take a look now at the main part, which is the 3D objects, how I rotate these objects, and this kind of thing. First, I have here uh, the object organizer. The main object is the rectangle and the 3D, text 3D. The text 3D is under rectangle, and the re rectangle is under main, uh, under the dummy. The dummy is just a layer around my object that's going to make me make easy for me to rotate all of the objects I have inside. Okay, and in order to view this object on the screen, so I have to change the position Z here. And if you decide to, to rotate the, the object, you can rotate here to the properties. And also you have on the, on the design all of these options here to click and rotate the objects here if you want. In my case, I'm not only using the main dummy, okay? I'm using as well here a uh, camera and let's move this camera up front so I have a camera here when I rotate the object you see I rotated the objects I'm not rotating this object I'm pretty much rotating uh, the dams okay which is around the camera it means in other words I'm rotating the camera and the light is under the camera so when I move the camera the light will follow my camera that's why you see all of these movements here happening so let's go back to my camera minus 30 originally let's move my object here to zero and on this layer here I implement a few events the first one is the mouse wheel which I'm See, if there is no animation running, I'm doing here is pretty simple. What I'm doing is I'm calculating the new position vector for the camera, and this is the, 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 how you calculate that. I update the track bar with the new value for the camera. Uh, and I use these three events here, on layer, mouse down, mouse up, and mouse move. And these three events are responsible to rotate the object. You see here, I mean rotate the two dummy objects, which the camera are under this object, and the moment I run these objects, I run, I rotate the, uh, the dummy X, the dummy Y, in uh, uh, different, different directions, and I have this nice effect that I'm running around the objects. That's pretty much what I do here in this application. When you see this animate button in action here, you see animation happening, and the animation is pretty simple. I defined four animations, and I just call the method started. And all of these animations, let me show you, it's here, it's under the dummy object, which is going to, like I said, you have the camera here and there. At the moment I define this animations, you can see here three animations for the dummy X object, uh, what prophet I want to animate it, what the value that's going to start from the current position. It means no matter where it's, uh, I have the, 
the 3D object, that's where it's going to start the animation. And uh, the main animation is this one, which is the dummy under the dummy Y. I'm going to rotate the angle Y three six degrees. Okay, and then I can define what kind of interpolation I wanna, what kind of animation as well, and you define that for each one. For example, this animation is gonna be running during six six seconds, and all of these three animations will happen in six seconds. You see the first one happening two seconds. The second one is going to be two seconds, but it's going to delay two seconds to start. It means it's going to start only after the X1 here. And this one, X3, is going to start only after four seconds. That means I'm waiting these two uh, animations here to start. As a result, you have this really nice application. I'm not going through all of the code here. The source code is going to be available pretty soon, and you are going to be able to take a look and see. It's, that is no secret, it's pretty much change the properties, work with the controls, having control of all of the components on the screen, and that's it. So that's not, that's not difficult to work with this application to make this stuff here. It's pretty simple, and that's so simple because FireMonkey is easily to use, right? The source code for this application will be available soon at the Red Studio repository subversion. You can use the short URL to access that. And if you have the, any questions in the meantime, please send me an email, follow me on Twitter. And also at the moment I provide the source code, I'm going to write a lot of blog series about this application because there's lots and lots of stuff that you can learn from this application. Okay, thank you and bye-bye.